Drawing in Perspective, video lesson by Vladimir London, Drawing Academy Tutor. This is the St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg, Russia, that we will draw in one and two point perspective in this video. This is the largest Russian Orthodox Basilica in the world. It is dedicated to St. Isaac of Dalmatia, a patron saint of Peter the Great, Russian Tsar who had been born on the feast day of that saint in 1672. This building has a neoclassical design with a Greek cross ground plan and large central dome, the fourth largest in the world. The cast iron dome reaches 333 feet in height, or 101.5 meters. This dome's design influenced several other buildings that were built later yet lower, including the United States Capitol Dome. This is the complete drawing of the St. Isaac's Cathedral that I'm about to draw from start to finish. This is the best quality 100% cotton paper, and I lengthen the HB pencil with the pencil extender. We begin by marking the outermost top and bottom edges of the cathedral drawing. Close to the bottom edge, there is a horizon line, which always coincides with the viewer's eye level. We are looking at this building from the ground, so almost its entire height will be above our eye level. Using the extended pencil, I'm measuring the main proportion of the building, its height to width ratio. This proportion can be first measured in life and then replicated in drawing. In the Drawing Academy course, I teach how to measure proportions, angles, and alignments with a pencil. In our case, from this point of view, the total height of the building is slightly less than its width. This remaining bit fits just over six times in the total width. The left and right edges of the cathedral now can be marked as vertical lines. We perceive all vertical lines as totally vertical, although in photographs it is seldom the case. Nevertheless, we draw such lines at right angles to the ground. The second main landmark is the corner of the building that is closest to the viewer. Its location can also be measured in life and then marked in the drawing. The ratio is measured with a pencil. From this point of view, the distance between the right edge and the corner is twice smaller than the distance from the corner and cathedral's left edge. Another vertical line rises upward from that corner. As you can see, I'm using the candle grip to hold the pencil to draw long straight lines. The height of the building is also measured and marked down. Now it's time to use a two-point perspective to draw the main body of the building, which is actually a cuboid. The tilt of the perspective line has to be measured with a pencil in life, and then the same angle is applied in drawing. This line goes down towards the vanishing point located on the horizon outside the drawing area on the left-hand side. The exact location of that vanishing point is not important in this case. We only care about the correct tilt of the line. We do the same exercise with the perspective line that goes to the vanishing point on the right-hand side in two-point perspective. This point is also located outside the drawing area. Although the top edge of the building ends at the building's corner, we draw the perspective line beyond this mark. This will later help us with many other lines that will be converging towards the same vanishing point on the right. There are two lines at the footprint of the building. One line goes to the right, and one to the left vanishing points. I'm now marking the invisible edges of the cuboid, drawing the building as if it were totally transparent. This is the main rule of constructive drawing, depicting what you know, not just copying lines that you see. 
the line from the top right corner goes in perspective towards the left-hand side vanishing point. And from the top left corner, the line goes to the right-hand side point. The tilt of those lines is such that they will eventually converge into vanishing points. The intersection of those lines marks the vertical edge of the cuboid, the fourth invisible corner of the building. Now, I want to find out where the center of the cathedral is. To do so, I draw two diagonals of the top plane of the cuboid. I apply very light pencil pressure, as those virtual lines are only helping guides. The intersection of those lines is the exact center of the top plane. This is an important landmark. Through this central point, I can now draw a virtual vertical line that goes from the ground to the very top of the cathedral. This line is just a guide, so I'm using light pencil pressure here. The main cuboid of the building is in place. Now I can spend a little bit of time decorating it with lines of stonework. This is totally optional at this stage and can be done later. As you can see, these decoration lines are also tilted in perspective. Drawing them freehand requires a certain ability to draw straight lines and above all the feeling of perspective that only comes with practice. Also, when drawing in linear perspective, don't forget about the rules of aerial perspective. The lines that are closer to the viewer are bolder and darker and they gradually fade away the farther they are from the viewer. Two main decoration bands go around the entire building. When drawing those bands, I'm carefully judging the tilt of the lines in perspective, making sure that they are leading to a virtual vanishing point on the horizon. At the right-hand side of the building, there is the portico with the colonnade. I'm marking the width of this portico with two vertical lines. A portico is a porch leading to the building that can be extended with a colonnade. I'm now making the base of the pediment of this portico. This base is essentially a cuboid, and we use the same rules of two-point perspective, making sure that the lines are tilted correctly and converge into two vanishing points, one on the left and one on the right. Here are the left and right edges of the portico. To find the middle of this portico, I'm drawing two diagonals on its frontal plane. The intersection of those lines is the central point, which in perspective is seen closer to the farther edge. I draw a vertical line in the middle through this point. This is an octo-style portico, which means it has eight columns in a row. To find the location of those columns, I divide each half of the portico in half once again using diagonal lines. This makes four parts in perspective. Each of those parts will contain two columns. There is another way to determine the spacing between columns in perspective. I will describe it later in this video. You remember how we marked the center of the portico using diagonals? Now this center can be used to find the placement of the top point of the triangular pediment. We also need to find the center of the right-hand side wall using the method of diagonals. This vertical line marks the center. It can be connected to the frontal vertical line of the portico. This line, in perspective, is the top edge of the portico's gabled roof. Now we can easily draw the slopes of the gabled roof with the necessary precision. The top corner of the pediment's triangle is connected to two corners at its base. The St. Isaac's Cathedral has the bigger main portico at the front. 
To place it in the middle of the wall, we need once again to find the plane's center using the method of diagonals. Now I mark the rectangular projection of the portico on the facade of the building. And here's the projection of the portico's triangular pediment. This projection has to be extended from the wall frontwards. Extension lines are also tilted in perspective. The aim of this exercise is to build a cuboid of the portico, which contains the base of the pediment and the colonnade. Once again, we need to mark the middle line of the frontal plane of the portico. Diagonals serve this task very well. The middle line is extended upward till it crosses with the top edge of the gabled roof. From this point, we can draw the triangular shape of the pediment. Here's another method to draw correctly spaced columns in perspective. First, we draw eight equally spaced horizontal lines in perspective. Then we mark the diagonal running through these lines. It crosses the horizontal lines in eight points. Through these points, we draw vertical lines corresponding to eight columns. These columns are spaced with precision. You can see that the distance between columns diminishes in perspective the farther they are from the viewer. Although this method is very accurate, you can practice drawing spacing in perspective by judging distances and proportions by eye. After all, you are an artist, not an architect. The ovals at the top of each column have their main axis parallel to the horizon line. I quickly mark capitals and plinths of the colonnade. On both sides of the frontal portico, there are two bell towers attached to the main building. I mark the vertical edge of the right tower. So far, the shape of this tower is simplified as a cuboid. At the left-hand side of the facade, there is another tower, which is hidden by the portico. The decorative stone band goes around the tower. Its lines follow the rule of two-point perspective. At the top, the tower has a more elaborate design than just a cuboid. Nevertheless, all the more complex architectural forms can be described in drawing using simpler objects like rectangles, triangles, and circles. If you learn how to use one and two point perspective to draw such simple shapes, it will greatly help in drawing whatever architectural forms you see or imagine. The tower has eight columns, two at each side. Although these columns look relatively small, each weighs 64 tons. This is as much as 16 adult elephants. I'm using perspective lines to determine the position of the second tower that is farther away from a viewer. The cathedral as it stands today is not an original design. It has been rebuilt four times since the time of Peter the Great. The current version of the basilica took 40 years to complete. Every exterior column of this cathedral is a monolith, carved from red granite. With all the achievements of contemporary science and industry, today we still don't have the technology to cut hard stones with the precision that is present in the St. Isaac's Cathedral columns. The portico's columns weigh 114 tons each. At the top of the four bell towers, there are gold-plated cupolas. They crown a larger dome, which we will begin drawing shortly. The cathedral's main dome is located centrally. You remember that we found its vertical axis using the method of diagonals. Now it is time to depict the dome's lower drum. 
It has a cylindrical shape, hence its architectural name, rotunda. I mark its width on the horizontal line. This horizontal line is the main axis of the oval that is a circular top plane of the drum cylinder seen in perspective. I mark the height of this oval. The width to height ratio of this oval can be measured in life and replicated in drawing. There are also other geometrical methods of defining the width to height ratio, which I will present later in this video. When drawing an oval, remember to keep its ends rounded. An oval is a circle in perspective and therefore cannot have sharp edges. With one oval in place, we can now define the width to weight ratio of another oval, which is located at the top of the rotunda's colonnade. To do so, we draw two virtual tilted lines in one point perspective that go to the vanishing point on the horizon. Using these two lines, we now draw a square in perspective that inscribes the oval. From the two edges of the oval, we draw virtual vertical lines going upward. At the top, there is a horizontal main axis of another oval that represents the top circle of the rotunda. The intersections of the horizontal axis and vertical lines are marks through which we draw two more tilted lines in one point perspective. These tilted lines go to the same vanishing point on the horizon. From the four corners of the square defined earlier, we draw four vertical virtual lines till they cross the perspective lines. Here is another square in the same one-point perspective, which gives us a cuboid with its bottom plane shaded in gray. Using diagonals, we can check the correctness of the axis at the top square plane. This axis is the main axis of the second oval, which is the top circle of the rotunda seen in perspective. Inside the top square plane, we draw the oval. This oval is located higher than the previous one and farther from the horizon. Therefore, it appears noticeably fuller. How much fuller is defined by the cuboid built in one point perspective. At the top of the main drum, there is another one, which is smaller in diameter. I'm measuring its width with the pencil, making sure it is symmetrical. Through the two red points that represent the width of the smaller drum, we draw two more lines in the same one-point perspective. Using the diagonals at the top square plane and lines in perspective, we mark a smaller square, marked in red, in the same plane. It is equal in size to the smaller drum width. Inside of this red square, we draw an oval which is the footprint of the smaller drum. With the base of the smaller drum in place, we can now depict its top oval. Its width is marked with red dots through which we draw two more perspective lines. Once again, using lines in perspective, we draw a cuboid, the bottom plane of which is indicated in gray. The diagonals of the top square plane help us to find the main horizontal axis of the top oval. Inside of this top square, we draw an inscribed oval. Because this oval is higher, it appears fuller than other ovals, which are closer to the horizon. Above the top drum, there is the main cupola with a rounded shape. The St. Isaac's Cathedral Dome is 22 meters in diameter and weighs 300,000 tons. It is plated with more than 100 kilos, or 220 pounds, of pure gold. 
The Rotunda's colonnade has 24 columns. They are located at the height of a 14-story building. Drawing equally spaced columns arranged in a circle presents a challenge, but I will show you how to solve it with precision. To simplify this demonstration, I will do 16 column rotunda instead of 24. I'm measuring the radius of the rotunda and making several marks with that radius to build a semicircle just beneath the rotunda. This semicircle is split in eight equal parts. To draw a 24 column rotunda, you would split it into 12 parts. At the end of each radius, I place a small circle representing the column's footprint as seen from above. Using vertical projection lines indicated in red, I mark the location of every column on the rotunda. These equally spaced columns appear in the side view with the necessary precision. As an artist, you can draw such columns measuring distances by eye rather than drafting architectural plans. The columns of the St. Isaac's Cathedral are done in the Corinthian order, which means the column's height to width ratio is 10 to 1. The Corinthian order has the most elaborate capital, which is too small to depict in detail in this drawing. In the Drawing Academy video course, I dedicated a separate video lesson to how to draw Corinthian order capitals. There are two big arched windows on the cathedral's facade. The right one is visible in our drawing. There are 24 statues standing on the roof. I draw those statues as simplified shapes rather than describing them in detail. The purpose of this video lesson is to show how to draw a building in one and two point perspective. If you want to learn how to draw figures and portraits with the full knowledge of a human anatomy and correct proportions, you can enroll in the Anatomy Masterclass. The triangular pediment is decorated with the high relief sculptures. I'm giving only a suggestion of this decoration instead of drawing each figure. With all main elements of the cathedral in place, we can now render some tonal values to reveal its three-dimensional nature. I suggest that the light is coming from the top left corner and render the right wall in shade. There is the cast shadow beneath the portico's roof. I'm rendering the cast shadow of the frontal portico together with columns to speed up the process. Even deeper cast shadows can be rendered between columns. Traditional tonal rendering techniques are fully presented in the Drawing Academy video course. Lighter value columns are drawn by erasing graphite hatching with a soft kneaded eraser. All virtual helping lines can be erased at this point as they serve their purpose well and are no longer required. This step is optional and you may decide to keep those lines to make constructive drawing more interesting. A wide hog brush can be used to wipe off eraser particles. I continue rendering tonal values, gradually building up a required tone. While rendering the tonal values of the cathedral drawing, I would like to say a few more words about its design. The design of this building is inspired by the architecture of ancient Greece and Rome. The simpler rectangular shape of the building gets its magnificent look from such elements as porticos, the rotunda, and the dome. For example, the octostyle designs of the porticos is similar to the Pantheon in Rome and the Pantheon in Athens. 
the triangular pediment resembles many Greek temples. The Corinthian order columns are slender and glorious. The columns of the St. Isaac's Cathedral deserve a separate word. There are 112 red granite columns in total, including 48 at the ground level. Each column is cut out and erected as a single block. Each stands unsupported under its own weight, bearing the colossal weight of the dome and roofs. The dome has a cast iron structure and is the biggest in the world that uses such construction. It is decorated with 12 statues of angels that were not cast but electrotyped, which was a brand new technology invented in Russia in 1838. These statues are 21 feet high, but the metal is only a few millimeters thick. Let's come back to our drawing, which is almost complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. To learn traditional drawing techniques, enroll in the Drawing Academy course. When it comes to the Drawing Academy price, consider this. This online drawing course is unique. It is the only place where you will receive lifetime personal support from Academy tutors get constructive critique of your artworks, and receive tailored advice on how to improve your drawing skills. This personal support is unlimited and comes at no extra charge. You won't get the same deal anywhere else. Principles of classical drawing are no longer taught in colleges the same way we teach them here. In the Drawing Academy, you will learn how to draw whatever you want, from life, memory, or imagination, using time-proven drawing techniques that follow traditions started by the old masters. In online video lessons, you will discover step-by-step -step principles of constructive drawing, how to draw in perspective, golden ratio, proportions of a human body, human anatomy, rules of composition, proficient tonal rendering techniques, and much more. As a Drawing Academy student, you will also benefit from our online art community, where you can exhibit your works of art, get feedback from your fellow students, receive art articles, albums, and bonus video lessons. Improving drawing skills is not a project. It is a lifelong process. That is why you will enjoy a lifetime Drawing Academy membership and learn drawing at your own pace in the comfort of your home. Our students achieve better results in just a few months compared to contemporary art college graduates who have spent four to five years of their life and up to $100,000 on art education. The one-time price you pay for the Drawing Academy is just a small fraction of the video lesson's real value. 45 drawing lessons purchased separately at $99 each would cost $4,455. However, you can get all the drawing lessons and bonuses for less than 7% of their real price. That's more than a 93% discount you may also spread the cost over three easy monthly installments. In both cases, you will receive the Lifetime Tutoring and the Drawing Academy Diploma of Excellence in your name. You are just one click away from learning classical drawing skills. Click the Enroll button now.